Hi, welcome back to Bite Size Guide. I'm Phil. Today we're going to be looking at timeline templates. Now, why would we want to create a template for a timeline? I hear you ask. <laughs> well, if you're doing a series of videos on YouTube, on your YouTube channel with a specific theme, in this case for us, our made up channel is called Great Historic Buildings. So in theory, we would have a series of videos showing different places. Now, the film footage on each of those videos would be different, but there are some things that will be the same on all of those videos. It could be the style of titles, the pop-up subscription button, music, perhaps a common music theme, an end title or credit. Usually, you would have to create these every time. So if we can create a template with all of these assets already in there, it just saves a lot of time. And also it standardizes everything. So your titles and all, all the bits and bobs, all the elements will be the same. It gives like a standardization to your videos. So the project that we're looking at at the moment, I've got all of the things that I want in it. I'm happy with the video. I'll just play it just to show you what we've actually got. We've got a pop-up title. We've got another graphic that shows National Trust in the top right hand corner there. So I'll just play those. That's our graphic, uh, title rather. And our graphic National Trust in the top right. And then in a second we'll have a pop-up for our YouTube channel, which is Great Historic Buildings. Here it comes. There we go. Great historic buildings. So we've got that. We've also got, if I move the timeline on a bit, we've got some music. Ooh, very haunting. Taking three years to build, an opening in 1889 for the 7th Duke, the Chapel of St Mary the Virgin at Clumber Park is no ordinary country house chapel. This impressive cathedral in miniature certainly lives up to its nickname, being the same size as most parish churches and yet commissioned only to serve the Duke and his small family. Those who lived and worked on the estate were also invited to attend services here. So that's a generic piece of uh, music that I'd probably want to put in more than one video. It's quite nice, probably fitting for like great historic buildings. It kind of fits in. So I was going to keep that as well. And if we scroll right to the end of the video, we've got a end caption, end credit. So if I play that. And that's a sort of like an end credit that I want to put on all of the videos. So all of those elements that we've looked at, I'd like those to be included in every video that I do. So we're going to leave those in the template. We're also going to leave track structure. We've got a track for logos, titles, video one, video two, audio, voiceover and music. We're going to leave those in. That saves us having to create them again. So what I'm going to do now is to strip out all the parts of this project that I don't want to be present on my template. So I want to get rid of all the things that are not generic or specific to this video. So I'm going to get rid of the video track and the audio track. So in order for me to do that, I'm going to leave all of my tracks locked and just unlock the ones that I want to clear. If you don't do that, you'll find that sometimes if I, uh, if you clear off parts of one track, it can affect parts of the other tracks. So just to be safe, keep them all locked. So first of all, I want to get rid of 
a voiceover track. It's for the Clumber Park Church, so it's not something I want uh, or I'll need um, in every in every video in a series. So I'll unlock the voiceover track, and all I'm going to do is right click on voiceover and cut it, and then we're going to lock the track again. So next, we want to get rid of the main A roll video and audio, which are these two tracks. So what we can do, we'll unlock them both. And we can do, we'll click on one and do Control A. Control A will highlight everything. But because all our other tracks are locked, it won't actually delete anything else other than these two tracks. Now at the end of our video track, there is that end credit. I don't want to delete that. So I'm going to go Control and click so it's not that's not going to be included in the delete. I mean, if you wanted to, you could control alt and delete all the bits that you wanted just to be on the safe side. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to ripple cut, I'm going to cut, and that will leave the end credit where it is. So, when we come to do our next project, our next video, we'll just have to remember to drag that onto the end, move it down to the end of the video. We'll just click cut. And that'll leave our end credit where we left it. And then again, we'll lock those two tracks up again. So now we've got a timeline that's got a title, a graphic for National Trust, a pop up subscribe button, music, and an end credit. And we've got our tracks already configured. Now, of course, what you can also do is configure, go to File and Project Settings. You can configure all the um, aspects of your project that you want. And because this is a working project, and I've already done that, I don't need to do that in this case. But if it was a template, if you're doing it from scratch, then obviously, like any project that you were starting, you'd have to set it up first like you would do. So just before we uh, save our template, now that we've got everything on our timeline as we want it, just want to go to Media Pool and just remove the video files that uh, we were using in this particular video, because if we don't do that, when we create the template, these video files will pop up and be present in all uh, every time we create a new video project from that timeline template it will show these so we just want to highlight just the video files that we were using and remove the selected clips so all we've got left is our end credit great historic buildings pop up our National Trust logo, our title, and of course the timeline, which is this. So there we go. So if we go back, we get rid of the media pool, we go back, and we'll go File, Export, Timeline, and we'll call it Great Historic Buildings Timeline Template Version 1 And we'll save that And we're saving it to our desktop Doesn't matter really where you save it to It's just for convenience of this video So that is uh, our template saved So if we come out of DaVinci and there it is. So we'll pull it across. GHB, Create Historic Buildings, Time Light Template, Version 1. What we can do now is fire that up. You notice it's moving you directly into DaVinci Resolve 20. So if we go, we'll just wait for it to settle out. And if we go to the edit page, there we have it. I'll shorten the uh, timeline just so we can see it all. 
So we've got end credit. We've opened it up. This is a brand new project now. And we've got our credits, which we can change to whatever we need to. National Trust logo. And a pop up subscribe button. Oh, and a music file. Very nice. So all of those assets, we don't have to create from scratch again. And also, it keeps it standardised. So those assets will be the same on all of your um, project series. So all we have to do now is close off this project and it will ask if we want to save it. So we'll close it off. Save project changes. Save. So we'll call this new project, we'll call this Great Historic Buildings New Video Series Episode 2. And we'll save that. So now, if we go back into DaVinci Resolve, and there we have it. GHB, Great Historic Buildings, New Video Series, Episode 2. So that's our new new video. So if we open that up, there we are. All prepared and waiting to go. We'll just have a look at the media pool. All our assets are in there. Lovely. Perfect. So as you can see, that saved us or would save us a lot of time. If you were doing two dozen videos in a specific series, that would save you a good half an hour on each video easily. Setting all those things up again and again. Every time you create a new video, it's already waiting for you. All the stuff's already there. Your project's already configured. Your track structure's already there. Brilliant. If you found this video useful, please give us a thumbs up and click on subscribe. And also, please leave a comment. The more comments we get, the more improvements we can make to these videos, and the better and more useful they'll be to people in the future. I'm Phil, and this is Bite Size Guide. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.